So I'm making here the color of raw canvas. And uh, I'm going to do this series, whoops, rather experimentally in a way that I don't normally, well I don't normally talk, I would have normally sworn there, but uh, I don't normally talk while I paint, I don't know how far I'm going to get with that, and uh, I, I basically just want to kind of unprime, we'll call it, these paintings. They've been primed as a, as a white, with a white, these canvases, or not paintings, yeah, they've been primed. <sighs> Ready to go for a normal person. But no. So I'm adding some uh, gloss, medium, gel, medium, what are we adding? Gloss medium. It's a medium. And it's gloss. Medium meaning it serves as a compound to create a different sort of a feel and surface. So I'm going to say that that is a raw canvas, although I think it should be a little bit browner. A little bit of brown, and I would just call brown. And get a grip on this bowl. And uh, I've had these canvases around for quite a while. Gone too brown. I'm going to sacrifice a kitchen towel to this process. So, yeah, I'm now too brown, so I'm going back. Oh, that's gold. Christ, okay. Evidently, there's going to be some gold as opposed to raw umber or ochre. So now I'm going to go straight to some, what I'm going to call yellow, but they're going to call something else, no doubt. And I'm going in the wrong-ish direction for this raw canvas. If you can remember a point in your life where you've encountered raw, unprimed canvas. It's kind of a warm, white, contentious in that it got away from me in the last couple of minutes there. I'm thinking, oh yeah, yay, I'm thinking that's pretty much, yeah, that's going to be our work. And really, this is just getting layer. In many cases, paintings that we see reproduced in fancy art books, I 
now we look at them online and we see this kind of warm color coming through. Well, we think it's an added color. We think of it as a, a that it's been painted in. But more often than not, what you're seeing is the color of raw canvas. So rather than painting onto this white prime canvas, that's why I called it unpriming it. I'm going back to this raw canvas. Now, this is all very, uh, it looks impulsive, spontaneous. It is not. I spend a lot of time deliberating, thinking, planning, conjuring, you know, not, not formally, but while I'm doing other things. And then I begin with the, uh, what do you call it, procrastination and deliberation, much more so than I am likely to suffer in other art forms, such as writing, which I seem to be able to get right down to. No, no hint of writer's block. But with the painting, I put it off. I, I seem to, I, I, I put it down to, uh, because I've, I've been subjected to painting my entire life. And, and the, I've lived with artists, painters in my childhood, my parents, let's say. Let's just come right out with it. They were painters. They were kind of fussy, <laughs> a little bit finicky, opinionated, volatile, vociferous. Uh, all of these things I think are good, you know. I'm not, I don't think these are negatives. But this is the type of thing that I now have to kind of get over myself a little bit, as they say, and get on with uh, the painting process. And so here we are. I would say we're in. I'm in. I put those canvases out to dry on the uh, balcony there. And I have a little bit of this uh, canvasy colored paint left over, which I'm going to turn into a, a winter sky. The uh, not sure how far I'm going to go with uh, painting in this sort of uh, production line method, but uh, so far I'm thinking I want to I want to add the sky, and uh, then I'll see what I think. So I'm, I'm not essentially opposed to having this sort of uh, warmth, this earth kind of brown color in in my uh, my sky. I don't want just gray. In fact, as I go along here, I, I think I want some uh, blue. are still a little bit sticky around the edges. I want to get in here, brush a bit wet, moisture on. to look painted 
painted. I'm just going for this could actually even be quite a bit thicker, but since it isn't, that's what it is. Yeah, I wouldn't be doing this if I hadn't done a lot of other things in life first. And in a way, I feel like I, it, it's, it is contrived. I want this, I'm, I'm thinking about where this canvas is showing through, and, I, and I'm beginning to think that that's not really right. That is what's happening. So that's that was my intention and that's what I'm going with. Unfortunately, a bit of unblended material down the bottom here, or I'm using the side of the brush that's got a little bit too much white on it, so I'm going to dissipate some of that. So I'm going to use another brush. got a nice little bit of painterly action through it, so that's a good thing. Maybe this is okay. Maybe this is... To me, it's definitely sky, it's not paint. No, that's not true. Now this one, because it doesn't have a whole lot going for it, really, it's pretty much a solid, really solid piece of sky. So I'm going to that down with a spray bottle and in a moment I'm going to try to pull off some of that paint with a brush, with a dry brush to see if I can get a kind of a, uh, a reaction from that medium that I put in there. This would be, this should be just somewhat thicker as a, as, as a substance for me to get the real painter, painterly quality that I'm looking for. It's also bloody small to be working at this, this range. Now imagine my mountain is going to cut into some of the sky because I'm, I'm aiming for C mountain and sky and in fact so the sky may not actually be as prominent prevalent so here's my dry angled brush that i'm going to try to pull off some of the yeah no that didn't really work definitely a nice Effect. Regardless, that's nice up along the top there. And in fact, it is washing, it is washing off some of that color. And here I'm getting a nice sort of draining down into this area that I may well use and replicate elsewhere.
down here. That's very nice. Oh, I have an urge now to give that one a spray. Really just doing anything to the bottom here to just to prevent it from dripping. Okay, one more. Whoops, what's up in here? Too much. I kind of wrecked that thing there that I was doing. Leaning out in the center that I liked, and then remember by my just saying that yeah, that is sometimes what happens, ruining the thing. But in this case, I don't think that I have. So some nice things happening in there very subtly. Keeping in mind too that horizons are typically lighter. Slatted onto that one. Lighter on the bottom. Okay, one more. out to be a kind of an authentic area up in, up in the corner where you're getting the structure of the structure and the canvas and in the same way that painters who painted on raw canvas would be seeing the canvas showing through in those points I'm also kind of getting Getting that same sense. So that one's turned out to be kind of the plainest of the bunch, but that's okay. Now, I've seen something in this one here that's a little bit of a kind of a green color that I like. yellowy green and instinctively more than anything adding this bluey green and I think a bit of this gold and I'm still using the bowl that I made for the original raw canvas color 
and uh, can sometimes be an interesting way to proceed. As it turns out, I think I've got more of a C color going on. Ocean below. Let's see. But it too is going to be connected to the sky, so there's really no reason to be trying to regard it as a separate color. It's going to have the sky reflected into it, so we're just going to kind of go with this error of circumstantial. Where it was to be, this, this other bit of color that I'm seeing now I'm doing something else. So this is going to actually be baseline and this brush is now to load it up. I'm going to just forget about that brush for a while. And use this one that I remarked was to be for the dragging across dry surface. As a dry brush on the surface, but it, as it turns out it's, it's got a good sort of functionality to the land. We got the land is going to go in here. I think I want to straighten out this horizon a little bit, get a little more paint on here. Likewise, over here. I'm Jean Smith, and I've been painting for a show at Northern All Ages in Olympia, Washington for the month of September. It is our second time there as the Black Dot Museum of Political Art. And uh, this series that I've been working on is actually the work that was described in a novel that I've written by the same name, the Black Dot Museum of Political Art. So this is the work of uh, one of my characters. He's a narcissist and he seeks attention and in, in this case mostly from women and uh, he's met this much younger woman and she's a political activist and she's uh, working against a coal mine on Vancouver Island, the Ra Raven Coal Mine which threatens the area environmentally including uh, uh, shellfish beds right in that area, uh, very uh, sensitive uh, environmental ecosystem that will be negatively impacted if this coal mine goes through. So many of the activists in the area are working in various methods to oppose this mine. Uh, she, her name is Catherine, is not particularly impressed by Martin uh, in really any regard, but uh, she's especially uh, negative about his traditional landscape paintings and uh, he understands that he can impress her and get her attention if he uh, painted something that she felt was political and directed against the, the coal mine. So he uh, takes a large portion of his, his body of work uh, and proceeds to alter them uh, to uh, impress Catherine. So this is, uh, these are the paintings that uh, were formerly uh, traditional landscape paintings of the area, 
a traditional sky, land, and sea, and he's gone ahead and created something out of his work that he believes will get him in with Catherine. Greens are not my favorite thing to work with. Thank you. 
So this is the uh, toxic material flowing out of the coal mine, specifically Raven coal mine on Vancouver Island. These are paintings Martin Lewis did. They were uh, a destruction of his traditional watercolor paintings in order to pre impress a young woman, a political activist, who was opposed to the coal mine, the Raven coal mine on Vancouver Island.